have a Rails application here with multiple articles. And if I click on an article, notice that the URL isn't very descriptive of the content here. It's just using the internal ID in the URL, which is the default behavior in Rails. But it would be nice if we had the name of the article in this URL somehow. Now the easiest way to change this behavior is to go into the model, in this case the article model here, and to override the toParam method. This is the internal method that Rails uses to uh, convert an object to a URL parameter. So we could say, let's include the ID at the beginning and add the name attribute in here as well. And then we can call parameterize on this to convert it to a URL friendly value. So with that simple change, now when we try visiting an article, you can see it includes the name of the article in the URL there. Now it's very important that the ID is at the beginning so that it works properly with an active record find call. If you don't want the ID here at the beginning, it's a bit more challenging to get this all working. Well, this is where the friendly ID plugin can help. It makes it easy to use the name of the model in your URL instead of having to prefix it with the ID. Now there are many features included in this gem, but let's see what's involved in adding it to our application. First, add it to the gem file. I'll add it to the end here called friendly ID, and then run the bundle command to install it. And then next, go into the model, and instead of overriding the toParam method here, call extend on the friendly ID module, and that will add the friendly ID behavior into here, so you can call friendly ID, and then pass in the name of the attribute you want to use in the URL, such as the name of the article. So now when we visit the application and click on an article, you can see that it includes the name of the article in the URL without including the ID. However, it's not very pretty on other complex titles, such as this article right here. The URL isn't very pretty because it's using the full title of the article, including the spaces and everything. Now in some situations, this might not be a problem if the attribute passed into friendly ID is already URL friendly. But in this case, the name of the article isn't guaranteed to be URL friendly, so we should use what's called a separate slug attribute. And to do that, you can pass in the use option and call slugged here. Now this is going to look for a slug column in our database, so we'll need to create that as well. So let's generate a new migration for adding the uh, slug column to our articles table. And it's just going to be a string attribute. And it's a good idea to add an index for this attribute as well, because it's going to be used for finding the uh, records. So just call add index in the migration and pass in the table and column name. And then run rakedb migrate to add that column with the index. Now there's one more step we have to do here because we already have some existing article records and the slug column won't be filled in for those. So to fix this, you can open up the Rails console and type in something like article, find each, and then call save on each of these records. And that will actually generate the slug attribute. So now when we visit the article, you can see that the URL is nice and clean because it's using that new slug column. Now one thing that may be a concern is that if you edit the article, and change the name of the article, then it's going to update the slug as well. So if you try to reference the old URL, that is not going to work. Now there are a couple of different solutions to this problem. One is to instruct friendly ID to not change the slug when updating the article. And to do that, you go into the model and then override this method called should generate new friendly ID. And then you can say something like only if it's a new record. So that way it won't change the friendly ID for updating the article. And you can see this effect if we try editing this article again where the slug is Batman and Robin 2, edit, let's change it title to Batman and Robin 3, update, and the slug itself stays the same when the title changes. Now what if you want the best of both worlds where the slug updates to match the title, but older slugs are also supported so it doesn't break older URLs? Now we can do this through the history option that friendly ID provides. To do this, we'll need to comment out this override because we do want the slug to update when the article updates. We just want to add a history option here. So we say use slugged and history so that it keeps a record of the previous slugs. Now that history needs to be stored somewhere. So we'll need to generate a new database table for this. And we can do that by calling rails generate friendly ID. And that'll generate a new migration for creating a table call db migrate to run that migration which creates that table. Now there is a gotcha involved with this 
and that is this history feature only seems to work on newly created records. So if you have some existing records, you'll probably need to regenerate those upon enabling this feature. But here I'll just create a new article so we can test this out. I'll call it hello world, create that article, and now it properly sets the slug to hello world. Now let's try editing this article to hello world 2, and now it changes the slug properly to hello world 2, but let's try referencing the older slug, and that works as well and points it to the hello world 2 record. Now it would be nice though if when we reference an older slug like this, if it properly redirected us to the URL with the new slug. And to do that, we're going to have to alter the controller. So here's what that article's controller looks like. It's a standard RESTful style controller with the seven actions. And I wanna focus on the show action here, which is the action we were rendering there. And what I wanted to do is redirect us to uh, the correct article URL if it doesn't match the current one. To do this, we can see if the uh, current request path doesn't match the path to this article. And if that's the case, then they're either using an older slug or uh, the actual article ID. So in that case, we should redirect to that article path with a status of moved permanently. And that means uh, 301 redirect. And that way it'll redirect them to the latest slug. Now let's try this out on this URL here where I'm referencing an older slug. Hit reload and it's actually going to do a redirect to the latest slug. Now in this episode, I've only covered a few of the features that Friendly ID provides, but I encourage you to check out the documentation for the others. For example, there's this reserved module, which allows you to reserve certain keywords so that those are not taken by the slugs. That way, for example, new and edit pages can be reserved for actually editing and creating records. And the scoped module allows you to scope slugs within an association. And there's also the IETN module, which allows you to add some internationalization support for various uh, languages. And that's it for this episode. Thanks to Friendly ID, we now have nice readable URLs. Thanks for watching. In the pro episode this week, I show you how to use the rollout and degrade gems to roll out a new feature to a select set of users and degrade gracefully if there are exceptions. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.